it shows the two suspect vehicles blowing through an intersection before hitting two young girls on their bikes. We have learned that the fire started at a construction site, which was supposed to be an apartment complex with retail space for threats made to the school. And as you can see right behind me here, there is still a very heavy police presence. 39 packed with people celebrating their Father's Day weekend, and it involved this red pickup truck. City workers in San Jose voted to authorize a strike last week. Now their bargaining committees have scheduled a three-day strike. But many of the riders we spoke with say they want to see these increases go towards improvements on BART. They have been running into similar damage like this all over town with massive trees blocking certain roadways. Fishermen tell me because of the now shortened season, that means less supply. And that also means that cost will be passed on to the consumer. Fisher says the whole reason behind building a new stadium is to make it to the World Series within a six-year period. They absolutely want to see that momentum continue to keep going. These Warriors fans have already started to pack Thrive City. The block where it all happened is still shut down this morning, more than a day after this explosion rocked this neighborhood. And here behind me, this is our first up-close look at some of the damage left behind from yesterday's blast. All morning long, we have seen more than a dozen police and fire investigators coming and going from this scene, collecting evidence and just starting their lengthy investigation. As police and fire investigators work to piece together what caused a home in San Francisco's Sunset District to explode as heard on a neighbor's ring video, neighbors relive the moment. Suddenly, the glass, shake, shake, just like several people shaking my window. And I was, oh my God, my windows almost come down. Angela Chu was inside of her window company less than two blocks away when she thought it was someone trying to break in. And then later on, my friend called me, oh, my window broken, my window broken. Her friend was one of five families on 22nd Avenue told not to return overnight. A total of three homes, including the one that exploded, red tagged. This is San Francisco firefighters lined up shoulder to shoulder and watched one woman's body pulled from the rubble Thursday night. We brought in a human remain canine as well as one of our own San Francisco Fire Department live body canine search teams. We had to work in coordination with an excavator to actually move some of the debris so it would be safe for not only the firefighters but also the canines. Meanwhile, as daylight broke the morning after the blast, about a dozen investigators came to collect what appeared to be large canisters from inside or near the home where it all happened as possible evidence. They'll look at things, they want to make sure that they're looking at everything when they're looking for what they call a actual origin, which is where the fire may have started. And once they find that origin, they start to work on the cause. Another person that was inside of the home as well as a firefighter were also hurt yesterday. The cause of this explosion is still under investigation. However, fire officials tell me that investigation could take several months to complete. Live in San Francisco, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News. Long before a Titan submersible carrying five people on a quest to see the Titanic wreckage lost all communications before later imploding came the early warnings. We all told him, you know, someone is going to be killed in this thing and you, you've got to not do it. OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush paid a visit to Alameda back in 2015 while he was in the thick of building his submersible to meet with Liz Taylor. Taylor is a deep sea engineer and president of DOER Marine Operations where they build their own submersibles. He wanted to hear her findings from a research project. Stockton felt like he was pushing the edge. You want to push the envelope, use some new materials. And that's when Taylor specifically specifically advised against the use of carbon fiber as it's still experimental and has not been tested over time in extreme depths of the ocean. It being hollow on the inside or just, you know, one atmosphere on the inside and having the tremendous pressure of the ocean you know, trying to push in on it. It just doesn't, it's not, not the right material. Then in 2018, the Manned Submersible Committee of the Marine Technological Society backed her up, writing a letter also urging Rush not to proceed. Ignoring all warnings, he moved forward. So where this really went kind of askew was that 
it was like, I don't need that. <laughs> I've done the math, you know, I'm confident in my engineering. Taylor says Rush cut obvious corners, like not building his sub in a pair to have self-rescue capacity or with what's called an ROV. That's a remotely operated vehicle that can serve as a self-rescue tool. There was no capable ROV on board. There was no second submersible. And she says because Rush was technically operating in international waters, there was no way of stopping him. So when this happened through this, this combination of, you know, hubris, complacency and greed, it was incredibly frustrating and, and so sad for the families that they didn't have maybe they just had no idea of the true level of risk that they were putting themselves at in alameda lena howland abc 7 news Meet 31-year-old Chelsea Werner out of Danville. Hey, where are you starting? How about here? From the floor to the vault, the beam and the bars, with a little trial and error, Werner comes to the gym for practice four times a week to perfect her craft. Did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> she did it! We're now at a point where I, it's just no different than coaching any of the other kids. How many years have you been doing gymnastics? Like your whole life? Oh, the whole, whole life. After spending the past six years in USA Gymnastics with individuals without disabilities, next month she's headed to South Africa to compete in the Down Syndrome International World Championships. It just seemed like a great experience. Her gymnastics has never been better than it is now. So um, the competition will be tough, but Chelsea's ready. Chelsea is no stranger to the international stage. She won first place in the same competition first in London and then in Italy six years ago. I won in Italy. You won that in Italy? Was that your first world championship? Yeah. But Chelsea was way better than anybody else that was at that competition. They didn't have the skills that she was doing even listed. There you go. That's her coach, Don Pombo. She's been working with Chelsea for around two decades now. But when they started, she had no experience of working with kids with special needs. It was a learning curve for both of us. What's your secret? I treat her like, like she doesn't have, I mean, like anybody. She doesn't have Down syndrome, right? She just comes in the gym. You have to do a handstand, you have to do a handstand. And that hard work has paid off tenfold, inspiring parents of kids with Down syndrome across the world. You just think there's not going to be opportunities, you know, for my, my little child with Down syndrome. And Chelsea and other athletes are proving that that's completely untrue, that the sky's the limit. As for South Africa, are you ready for September? Are you ready to compete? Yes. If she does what we practice, she will win. In Dublin, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News.